flavors. That's what today's video is about. It's all about flavor. It doesn't matter if you have the most clinically neutral thing. If you enjoy flavor, it's what you enjoy. And the HPV Khan is definitely a flavor. I'm not gonna be comparing it with any targets because it doesn't really follow the usual thing. It does some very interesting things and the results are just as interesting. Just a couple of quick notes. It is very well made. It's sub $40 and I think it comes with and without a microphone. I got it without. I have one complaint in that the wire is fine, but the little bit over here that separates the neck wires, that is missing. A lot of budget IEMs don't seem to have that. I think it's quite nice to have it. I wish they'd include it. Surely it can't cost that much. But the important thing is how does it sound? And the answer is very interesting. Let's pull up the frequency response. There you go. Now over here you can see it's quite bass boosted, but that dips down at 200 Hz, which means the mids are left quite clean. That bass is a lot, but it is reasonably well controlled for the most part. We'll get to some limitations later on in this video. Mids are relatively clean, but when it comes to that upper mid rise, that's when it starts to get really interesting because instead of rising up at sort of one kilohertz and peaking at around three kilohertz, which is the norm, this starts its rise earlier and peaks out later. And the effect of that is there's a little more energy between sort of 800 hertz and two kilohertz. That means male vocals and everything else in that frequency range comes across much more forward, more intimate. And female vocals, because it tops out between three and four kilohertz and then starts to slope off, female vocals are also front and center, just like the male vocals. So they're both given equal emphasis and are both pushed forward a bit. Now, it's almost as if if you have a home theater system and you just turn up the center channel to full, that's kind of what it sounds like. And then you've got a treble forwardness as well, because remember, the slope only starts at four kilohertz and there's a lot of emphasis in the upper mids and the lower treble. And that actually is done pretty well because it sounds smooth. There's no irregularities, there's no harshness. Although if you don't like a treble forward IEM, this will come across as a little too forward on certain tracks. Now there are both upsides and downsides to this. The downside is, well, it's pretty well documented. If you've got more energy between sort of one and two, two and a half kilohertz, you get a little more, some people call it honkiness, some people call it boxiness, but male vocals do exhibit a little bit of this, but because it's so nice and linear that rise, I think it's kept in check to a pretty large extent. And on the flip side, female voices and everything in that lower treble upper mid region also sound a little bit on the shouty side. Again, it's kept within control. So you get bass, you get treble, and you get a lot of vocal forwardness, which is honestly a lot of fun. It's basically like you have a V-shaped IEM without all the pitfalls of having a V-shaped IEM. It's pretty cool. Yes, you can clean it up with EQ, and yes, I did try, and that's when you kind of realize, okay, the vocals really shouldn't have this sort of emphasis because it can be a heck of a lot cleaner, but I'd be absolutely lying if I said this wasn't fun to listen to. Will I reach for it all the time? No. For long listening, for consistent listening, I don't really prefer this tuning because of the effects of boosting the mids like that. But it is a lot of fun. Now, there are some other downsides too. Uh, staging is okay, imaging is actually pretty decent. You can use it for gaming also if you want. I found it to be both immersive as well as well, it made it easy to find out where people are coming from, which is what most of us want, at least for eSports. So that's a good thing. The downside is, and this was a bit unexpected, it's a dual driver IEM, but it still struggles the way a single driver cheap IEM does for very, very complex tracks. So if you're listening to soundtracks like, oh, I don't know, Blade Runner 2049, there's a track called Seawall that's very nice. That actually does not render so well. There's a lot of heavy bass things and that go on with certain other sounds that are happening in the mid-range and two things happen. One, some of those details end up being masked over by the sheer amount of bass here and also it just can't render that kind of heavy bass track with integrity. It just sort of falls apart a little bit. Now it's not the worst thing in the world and this only really applies to very complex tracks and very heavy tracks. Otherwise, I don't think there's a problem. If you're listening to pop, hip hop, EDM, even a little bit of metal and stuff now and then, this is a lot of fun. Again, will I reach for it every day? No. But if you enjoy a bit of flavor, if you enjoy a bit of V-shaped IEM, this is probably the one I would easily recommend to anyone. 
Plus, with a little EQ, you could tame those mids and basically have possibly the best V-shaped IEM I know of sub $50. And that's pretty much it. That's the HBB Khan in a nutshell. I know we're supposed to make long videos so that we can run ads and make money, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, do consider subscribing or becoming a YouTube member and you'll also get to take part in a giveaway. How cool is that? All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.